Hola. Hola. Oh, crap. Hello, 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 you beautiful people. My name is Basti, and welcome to Basti Plays Minecraft. Today's episode is going to be a build-heavy one, so sit down, buckle up, and hold on to your seat, because we are going on a journey of creation. And as you might have read from the title of the video today, I will be trying to teach, teach you building in Minecraft. Such a wonderfully useful skill to have. You'll never know when that skill will be useful in real life. Yeah. But at least you can impress your friends with your new starter base looking slightly better than theirs. Wow. Okay, Bastis, you'll be teaching us, but what will you be showing us? Do you have examples ready for us? Yes, I do, actually. Today, we are going to finish what we have left in this city section. So, we have two buildings to complete, we have a lot of roads to build, and plenty of small details to go through. If you're looking for a block-for-block block tutorial, well, I might do one of those later on for some of these buildings that I have in this beautiful world. For now, this video is going to be a bit more about the concepts of buildings, some small tricks you can use, and more of how I approach a building. So let's embark on this journey together and let's see if we can learn something. Hopefully, we do. Otherwise, well, maybe I'm at least a bit entertaining. That is the goal, at least. And the first building we'll be looking at is this one. I've already worked out a little bit of a color palette. So we'll be using the dark oak, the stripped variant for the pillars. Like most of these buildings have pillars, this one shall have two. We shan't stray too far from the beaten path on this one. It's just a building and it's not even a very big one, but the plan is for this one to be a bit of a food stand kind of a building. We already have one of those right here. And I thought, let's take inspiration from this one and do something similar for this building. Maybe, you know, it's a chain restaurant kind of thing. You know, they get their supplies from some kind of warehouse somewhere in the city and they drive them out every morning up along these roads and deliver them to these food places, which then prepare wonderful potato-based dishes for all the lovely people. That's, I mean, it could be. Could be. Could be that. It's, it's lore. We make it ourselves, you know? The first thing I would like to do, now that I already have a color palette for it, it's basically decided from the building down there, what we need to do now is figure out a nice shape for this building to be. Something to take into consideration when creating the shape for this one is where is this building going to be viewed from? Well, we're gonna see it from down here and from down here coming up this way is probably the best view of it and coming from this way. So we got basically three angles this needs to work at, which makes me think that because this overall angle is going to be the more prominent one, I feel, because it's kind of obscured from there. We could do an entry where you enter from the side like this. I think that could look pretty cool. All right, I've been doing a bit of thinking, and what I've come up with is this. For the pillars, we shall use some dark oak, some wonderful stripped dark oak even. And I've also realized the error of my ways, and this should be taller, like so. And we can remove this white concrete now. There we go. We don't need this one either. That's just gonna be in the way. Awesome. Now, what I'd want to do here, actually, we can leave this part. Yeah, absolutely, we can leave this one. Because... Well, inside here, we're gonna do my favorite pattern ever. I do this on almost every floor, but you know what? It's a city. It's completely within the realm of possibility that everyone is using basically the same floor. Awesome. That's a good floor. Let's grab some of these because we're gonna have some chairs in here like so. Next up, I want to get mangrove. I need some cherry 
and I shall put away some of this stuff that I don't need just yet. And then we're gonna grab ourselves a ex Oh, that's annoying. Well, we've got two now, so that's that's good, I think. Let's grab ourselves some cherry slabs, way too many of them. Let's not grab as many mangrove slabs because I remember cutting these all down. Because I have the memory still in my head, I don't want to waste it. Then we put one, uh, you know, we could start with a darker one there. Dark and then light. You see, we're gonna go with the theme. Switch between this red and pink. And that is going to be the overarching theme in this build. And now, in this building, you see we can't get up on the chairs, but we solved that. We solved that easily with some mud slabs. And don't worry, this will all make sense. Okay, so let's put down a floor here. And I think the floor is supposed to be like up here somewhere. Cool, that's a floor. Now I need some trapped doors of the mangrove variety, like a so and some of the cherry variety, but of course we've wasted most of our cherry wood at this point. Great. We like wasting materials over here. Cherry trap doors, 42 of them. That's probably way more than we need. So we put one there, one there, and we alternate this pattern all the way down the line. Awesome. Well, actually you're getting a block by block tutorial. What is this? What is this basti? What are you doing? I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing though. People don't get don't get too surprised when I mess stuff up and go back and change things. Now we need to think again and I'm going to remove these blocks cuz we don't really need them. Let's put all of this stuff in there while we think about what the next step is. All right, some thoughts have been thunk, some very deep thoughts indeed, and the next step is this. We go like that. And then we go like this, that works, and we use these ones back here, because in here is going to be the very small kitchen. I don't think you need to see this banner stuff, this is just for the front side, for the customers to see. Awesome. Okay, next step, let's give some shape to the kitchen, and I think that is done like, th not like that, that is done like this, and like this cool yeah that, that looks about right then we take these ones and we go bup, 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 bup. i need a slab uh, bup. look it's already getting shaped now this is turning out great i'm so glad this works i was unsure now i am sure this works i want to fill this in with the red huh cool Awesome, let's put a roof on this thing. Okay, let me slap down a basic roof shape, and then I'll show you the detailing that I've done on all of the other roofs, because I kinda like this roof style. And it goes a little something like this. Basic roof is in, let's go do some details. So far, all of these roofs have just been upside down stairs, like a so, and a so, and a so, and you do this all over the place, even on the sides here. All right, and once you have all of these stairs in place, you do half slabs like this until you come to this corner here where you do one on the corner and then I do every other one. Awesome. Dude, this is looking so great so far. Woo. All right, let's keep building. And now people that we have a roof on this building, we are going to play with one of my new favorite color palettes in the game. And it is sandstone, white mushroom stems, and bone blocks, like this. Yeah, that's about it. And then we go... Like this. So let's discuss this color palette a little bit. I know, maybe boring for some of you, but this is interesting to me. So this color palette here is a really nice way to texture a white. And the white doesn't become overly white, like with... Do we have any white concrete still left? Yeah, you see the white concrete there is so white and like zero texture. But with the bone blocks here, you can really texture it nicely with sandstone and this white mushroom stem. And I'm doing this here because, well, you know, this is a restaurant and they cook stuff here. So if you ever had a white ceiling in a kitchen, you know, it doesn't stay white for long. So it's gotten a bit yellow up here and all of that, which is cool. 
it will make more sense once we get actual kitchen appliances in here. Yeah. Now that the inner roof is done, we can focus on getting this wall fixed up. And first things first, we fix up the top part with our alternating pattern. There we go. And we need a little bit of this. There we go. There we go. There we go. Awesome. That works so well. Now, let's light this place up a little bit. For lighting in here, we're going to use end rods. And we're going to put one right there. One, two, three, four, five of them. And then we put four on this side. There we go. And we hide them behind some beautiful little trapdoors. So look at that. And look at the lighting. It reaches right over the chairs and on top of there. And that is going to be important later on. Now with the building and lighting looking good as ever, let's actually get on with some awnings. I think it's called. Is it called awnings? Is that, is that what it's called? Th this thing? You know, this thing? The thing with the stuff what looks like this, you know? Is that an awning? Anyways, it's that one. It's stairs, slabs, trap doors. And on the other side, we do the other way, like that. Man, this is coming along. This is coming along. Are you seeing it? Are you seeing the vision? We just need some stuff back here now. And for the back side of the walls, right in here, we are going to use some of these. What's it called? Spruce fences. And we're going to use them like this. And I think they're supposed to be like that on this side. And on this side, they're just supposed to go like this. And that'll look good coming in from this side too, right? Yeah, this works. This works. Nice. Let's get on with some detailing, shall we? All right, so we're now getting to a point where it's time to work on the kitchen. And in the kitchen, we need some cooking stuff like smokers. It would be quite useful to have a kind of sink kind of thing. A washing bay, washing basin maybe. And I imagine out of this smoker, this is kind of like a stove kind of thing, a wood driven one. So out of this one, of course, we need the chimney to lead the smoke out of the building. Like so. And I like doing it a little turn there. It makes it somehow makes it feel more real, although it shouldn't. It really shouldn't. And out here, we should have a little bit of a fan kind of thing, something that looks a little bit like this. This is looking good, but to make this a little bit more real, let's go beneath here. Place a little block like this. Put down one of these. There we go. Now we're cooking with fire. Look at this. This is looking amazing so far. Now I would like some kind of cutting board. I could do two of these to make one of those. And with that, I think the kitchen is done. So now you can stand here, all oh, cook, 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 cook stuff here. Chop, 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 cook, 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 serve, 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 serve. Amazing. With the kitchen done, I think this building is almost done as well. What we could do now is just add a few details here and there, like maybe a lantern, some bushes, maybe some plates in there with armor stand magic and such stuff. From this point, basically, it's up to your imagination what kind of details you want to add to it. For me, I would like to do something a little like this. Welcome people one and all to Pose, your one-stop shop for all your nutritional needs. We've got French, mashed, baked, soup, grilled, potato of the day and the honey roasted. We will meet every single one of your potato needs. So if you're hungry, look no further than Pose. I mean, after watching that, who wouldn't want potatoes? And why not get them at Pose? You know what? I'm really pleased with this build. I tried to do some banner stuff. Uh, well, I tried to do some banner stuff. It didn't end up in the build, but I tried some some of this stuff. Thought that was kind of cool. Is it no? Like that? So you can see it when coming up from this road. Look. Shines bright like a diamond. I just listened to Rihanna. Don't, you know. Okay. 
and his signs were kind of cool. Some armor stand thingies. Post Tater Diner. That's the that's the official name of it. Post Tater Diner. They sell French fries, mashed potatoes, baked potatoes, potato soup, grilled potatoes, potatoes of the day, and honey roasted potatoes. It's a really cool build. I'm really happy with it. It's just you know it's a small build, but it has a lot of character. The thing is, a lot of these buildings that I've done so far. They're basically shells. I haven't put much character into them yet. Like, I mean, there's a whole empty space here. Gonna have to do something with that. This is probably going to be like a rental house of some kind. This is gonna be some kind of official building. Things just hasn't gotten their proper dues yet. You know, the thing that makes that building unique. This one especially it doesn't even have any windows, so I suppose that makes it a bit unique. Not in a good way, but in a way. This building, let's just talk about the details of this one. I'll give you a little time lapse of me putting it up, like the base of it. And then we'll do some detailing and all of that and talk a little bit about the texturing because once again, some of my new favorite textures and colors in the game. It's gonna be a fun one. So, Editor Basti, roll the time lapse. Welcome back from the wonderful time-lapse. And something I've done now that you didn't see in the time-lapse is I've put some of the details in by the windows. So as you can see, all of the windows inside the brown building have these upside-down stairs and these iron fences, which is a thing I've decided to use for most of the windows in this city. There's a few exceptions, of course. The windows on this bone block part only has the upside-down stairs. It's not overly detailed having this type of window design. I really like it though. I think it looks pretty cool. It could easily look a bit like you keep prisoners in there. But once we decorate the rest of the building, I think that feeling stops quite fast. So I wouldn't worry about it. Now, something more important. We have the shape of the building, which is, well, it's just kind of a standard building that part there is a little bit wonky. It's kind of diagonal-ish, diagonal adjacent. This on its own would be kind of a boring building, but attaching this part to it makes it a little bit more interesting. And it makes it a bit more challenging doing like windows and stuff. And that usually makes you think a bit more, at least for me, makes me think a bit more and makes me make cooler decisions. Usually, sometimes not, sometimes absolutely not. All right, enough about shape. Let's talk a little bit about texturing. Well, as you can see here, I've already done a little bit of texturing on this wall. Because, well, going back and doing it afterwards would be a pain. So I just build it like this. But this is just like trying to keep the wall not being so repetitive. Like with this wall, on the other hand, you kind of get away with it because there's not a lot of texture in it. So usually with stuff like the bricks, any type of bricks, mud bricks, stone bricks, regular bricks, all of those are really textured blocks. So if you use a lot of them, that goes for cobblestone as well, although you get away with it a little bit more. The reason that it gets to be a lot using these kind of repetitive textures, and the reason you can get away with cobblestone a bit more, is that cobblestone is a bit more chaotic of a texture, so it takes a little bit longer for the eyes to see the texture repeating in a meaningful way. With these kind of bricks, it's super easy to see how it's repeating. Same with these bricks, tiles, anything like that. Especially small, repetitive like that, like the bricks like those. It's unpleasing to the eye because it's nothing in reality that we see day by day has that kind of repeating texture and pattern to it. It looks unnatural and not in a pleasing way. So that's why in these type of buildings, I do stuff like... Oh wait, hold on, it's raining. 
Yeah, and that is why I break up the textures a bit like this, using, in this case, brown mushroom blocks, regular packed mud and mud bricks. And in this case, it breaks up the texture nicely, so it doesn't get too repetitive. You can still see that it's a brick building. And something interesting to note is that the less texture a block has, the easier it is to get away with using a lot of it. So if you see this building right here, it does have the same kind of texturing as the other one. It break up the texture a little bit, but I'm using white terracotta and that has a very, very, very slight texture to it. So it doesn't get to be any like big repeating patterns. So I just break up the pattern a little, little bit with these cherry planks and I think it works super well. So this is kind of the base version of texturing is just breaking up a pattern. And that kind of brings us to the next layer of texturing that I like to employ and use. And that is the step weathering. Weathering can be really cool and uh, really nice and can be also a lot. Weathering you can do if you watch B-Dub's videos. He does it great. He's amazing at it. He uses all kinds of different colors to make super cool weathering. But I'm not at his level yet. Might get there. Who knows? Someday if, if I keep up with practice. So as you can see, this building doesn't have anything like that. And not a lot of these buildings do. But as you can see, this kind of building kind of uses the weathering technique a little bit. The way I break up the blocks in this one does make it look a little bit weathered. But a better example of this is the rocket shop up here. As you can see on this building, this is clearly a red building using mangrove, red terracotta, and mangrove planks but i break it up a little bit and weather that with the bricks and the smooth granite block in this case and a little bit of regular granite too if i'm not remembering that wrong that is supposed to be like wind and rain and snow tearing at the building a little bit another building which had a bit more clear example of this is the house i actually live in this one this green building, I've used the same kind of weathering technique, but with the bricks and the, this time the actual granite block. And I used that to make it look a little bit more weathered, like you see, that almost like the paint is flaking off. Because I used the color palette for this building, is basically green terracotta, lime terracotta I mean, green concrete powder, and the moss block. And you see, the lime terracotta is definitely a more brighter less saturated green and it goes into the more saturated and even more saturated and more and more texture and i use that to my advantage by using the really textured and darker blocks around the place with the damages in and that way you can see it get less and less textured away from the damaged parts and I feel that is, a, that is a kind of a cool way you can use this kind of texturing techniques. There are loads of ways you can use it. So when it comes to texturing like this, there's, there might be certain rules to it, but I wouldn't listen too carefully to them. I say experiment and have fun with it. And you'll, you'll find stuff that you'll like. It's a lot of building and like painting, music, everything creative basically is coming from somewhere. There is no one creating from nothing. Even the very first artist was inspired by stuff around their environment. So a lot of building and creating and music and improvising and everything like that is about building up a repertoire of stuff that you know works, that you like, and from there it's easier to experiment. So you can have this kind of patterns that you like and use in different ways and in different buildings, and then you can start experimenting with them. So all of these palettes here are basically stuff that I learned like, oh, I like this, this is cool. And then from there, you just try different stuff and see what works. I don't know, this might seem boring to you. This is super interesting to me. I love this kind of stuff. If there's one skill that you could train yourself and it's quite easy and extremely hard at the same time you have to train your eyes and your brain a little bit i know that if you're new in building in minecraft and stuff this could be probably the hardest step and it's actually really simple you have to open your inventory and completely forget that this is mud bricks and that this is spruce planks and that this is a dark oak log and just see them as colors. Once you can unlock your brain to do that, it's so much easier building. Because I know when I first started out building in Minecraft, I used only stone and wood for buildings 
because that is what a building is made of. And concrete, maybe? Yeah, concrete works as well. Terracotta, sure, you can build something out of terracotta. But leaves? Nah. Moss? You can't have moss in a building. That's not that's not a stable block. But once you unlock the brain to think that moss, that, that's just a green, that's just a green color. That's a green wall texture. Then it becomes a lot, a lot easier to find cool color palettes and start working with texturing and stuff. So if you want to learn building, the first thing you can do is train yourself not to see the block names and what the block is and start looking at it as colors and textures and that will make stuff way easier a pumpkin doesn't have to be a pumpkin it can be it can be a roof material as well and so with that knowledge in mind let's now have a look at this building behind me and see what kind of weathering we can do to it and to not drag this out too much i will do a little quick twirl and we'll have a look at what kind of texturing i've done with it so here we go. And this is what I came up with. So let's go have a look at it. On this brown part, I like to use some dirt and some of this brown concrete powder. And I use this to make it look like water has been running down the building, eroding the walls a little bit. I think it looks cool. And once we add more details to it, it will look even better. This is kind of a safe weathering choice because it is the same color. It basically just changes in saturation and a little bit in brightness. On the white part, on the other hand, it gets a bit more fun. Still not super exciting. I mean, we're still using only like white colors, but we have some birch in here. It gives us a lot of textures, a lot of nice textures, some calcite and white mushroom blocks. And I've also done some things like this switched around some of the bone blocks a bit it gives a little bit more texture to the build as well as you can see a lot of white mushroom up there a lot of calcite not that much birch i feel like when it comes to the most extreme parts you don't want to use it too much so i usually stay kind of reserved when doing this type of weathering on a smaller building depending on the color choice of course because none of these textures are that extreme you don't need to do a lot of texturing for it to feel like a lot. So if I were to do more of this texturing, you could, you would kind of lose the bone block in it, kind of. That is fine, though, if that's what you're going for. But in this case, it wasn't. So I think just this small, small weathering is just going to do me just nicely. But now I think it's time to do the final detailing on this building and move on to our next project. So let me just finish this building up. And we can move along. And just like that, the details are in. Some beautiful plants, some potted plants, some big potted plants. It's just the large pot with the small pot inside of it. A dead bush and an acelia leaf. A lot of bushes. Some of these, I love using scaffolding in this way. There's also some pots hanging here from the wall. Lots of greenery. Lots of pots. You know, the same, same kind of details I've done everywhere. It's just nice adding a bit of greenery to the buildings around this city. Because I want this city to be very green, very cozy like that, you know? Maybe I'll build another district to the city that isn't that this cozy, but this district certainly shall be. Now, we've got lots more to do today, so I think it's just about time we got on with things and start to make some serious, serious progress. And you know what? What we'll do now is going to be one of the time lapses of all time where I do a lot of stuff. A lot, a lot of stuff. First off, I'm going to need to build the roads and the sign where the roads are gonna go. Then I have to add some details around the roads like these. Add my street lamps. I'm going to add detail to some of the buildings that are lacking detail and probably some other stuff too. This is going to be a project and it's going to take me quite a few hours to do, but I will roll a time lapse and I'll see you at the end of it when this city section is actually fully done. Let's get into it. Now it's supposed to
You know that wonderful feeling of completing something that you've been working for for a while? Yeah, that is a thing. And uh, I I'm done. And it's it's beautiful. Do you want to see it? Do you, do you, do you want to see it? Okay. This is it. This is the first section of my city completed. Let's actually take this road first. We already had this road going up here, which is beautiful. We like this. We all love this street. Very nice. But we now have this stairway connected down here so we can walk back here. Awesome. That is cool. Admit that is cool. And please admit it in the comments as well. Admit that it's cool. Good. Good that you admit that. So now when you come up the stairs, the road continues up here. And up here, we've got our beautiful houses. And it's pavement all the way. I even made this back alley. I paved it all. I did all of this. And it's blocked here. And it's blocked here. I don't want you to walk through the one wide gaps. So once we come up this road a little bit more, you can see that this balcony is fully done. Before it was an empty husk of itself and now it's a completed thing. The road back here as well continues. Before it ended up here and now the road goes all the way around. And the road continues back here in to Main Street. But when it comes to Main Street, I want to show you it from this direction. Look at this. Main Street now is so beautiful. Yeah, what can I say? Nothing. So what we've done here is I've put some plant outside of this one. I finished up these balconies, put in an extra window up there, put a sign up that this is a hotel building. I've built these little back alleys back here. I finished off all of the details on this house, all of the windows, all of the things. And on this house, I even put a little downstairs area like this. And as you can see, I've finished off all of these back alley areas as well. Put a little hangy thing with lanterns on it. Thought it looked cute. Pose is pose. You know pose. We built that earlier in the episode. I've put a new door thing here. Leads to absolutely nowhere. Shh, don't tell anyone. I've built another hangy little thing here. A tree next to the church. Put up a lot of these. A lot of the street lights is up. And this view. I love it. I love looking at the city from this way. It looks so beautiful. So much green, so much color, so many buildings. So much time. So, so much time. Anyways, uh, yeah. And it's just wonderful. And so with all of this building done, I think I'm done with the episode. I'm, I'm quite worn out from this. It's been a while since I've uploaded last, but you know, I said it was gonna be. Hopefully it won't be this long. It was two weeks. I want to try to keep at least within one and a half weeks. I just won't have a regular upload day, but I do still want to keep it kind of weekly. But we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future. My goal is working towards being able to make more YouTube videos because this is what I love. And you guys can help with that by subscribing and liking the video. And leaving a nice comment and recommending the channel to your friends, you know, all of that good stuff. So, I think I'll leave you with some small overviews of the city now that it's done. And I'd like to say thank you so, so much for watching. I love you one and all. And I wish you have a good day, morning, night, or whatever it is, wherever you are. I'd love to see you next time here on the channel. And until then, bye.